Hi, I'm John Veely, CEO of Online Visas. Today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about the SE VP modification. That's a student and exchange visitor program. This has to do with students on the F1 or M1 visa and the new changes that are pretty rough on them. Uh, so we're going to go through that in depth. And we're also going to talk about um, the potential furloughs of 13,400 employees or 70% of the workforce of USCIS uh, and how that could impact you in immigration. So not a good news uh, uh, update at all uh, by any means. Let's go through what these mean. So uh, the SEVP, the Student Exchange Visitor Program, modified their temporary exemptions for non-immigrant students while taking online courses during the fall 2020 semester. Now what had happened with COVID-19 is that the uh, SEVP instituted a temporary exemption regarding online courses for spring and summer semesters. This policy permitted non-immigrant students to take more online courses than normally permitted um, by federal regulations and maintain their non-immigrant status during the COVID-19 emergency. Now, the COVID-19 emergency is not abated. Uh, if anything, it's, it's spiked again and gotten worse. Uh, we're at, right now at the date of this, over 3 million cases in the United States and over 130,000 deaths. And uh, it's been a new spike. So schools are still intending to open um, right now as of the uh, really kind of the first week of July. Um, but uh, those things could change and change to more of an online sen uh, scenario. And that could really, really impact um, F1 students. Uh, now, some F1 students are going to have problems anyway because they're in some of the countries that are banned right now, which is the UK and all of Europe and Brazil and China and and it's really difficult to get in uh, without going to another country and, and and sticking there for 14 days before coming in. So notwithstanding that, <laughs> uh, here's a bigger problem and that's not just for students outside the country but those inside the country too. So let's go into it. So the temporary exemptions uh, for the, uh, the 2020 um, fall semester include Non-immigrant F1 and M1 students attending schools operating entirely online may not take a full online course load and remain in the United States. Okay, so if you're attending schools that operate entirely online, uh, you may not take a full online course load and remain in the United States. So that means they will not issue students uh, or visas to students trying to get in the United States for that. And uh, for those students in the United States, they must depart the country or take other measures such as transferring to a school with in-person instruction uh, to remain in lawful status, and if not, they may face immigration consequences, including but not limited to the initiation of removal proceedings. So, um, you know, that's the situation here. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, subscribe um, and uh, click that you want the uh, notifications, and we'll keep you up to to uh, speed on this kind of fluid, ever-changing situation. But right now, this is a big deal uh, because this is the SEVP, this is CVIS, um, that is saying this is how it's going to be going forward uh, for the fall semester. So that's um, what's the situation there. So, um, so number two, non-immigrant F1 students attending schools operating under normal in-person classes are bound by existing uh, federal regula regulations. Eligible F1 students may take a maximum of one class or three credit hours online. So if this is a regular um, school that has in-person, then you can take one online class of only three hours, right? So uh, that's the maximum on that. So that's really tough um, in those sort of scenarios. So in third, there's this one's kind of the best uh, one, the most relief. This is the non-immigrant F1 students attending schools adopting a hybrid model. I think we'll see a lot of this. That is a mixture of online and in-person classes. You'll be allowed to take more than one class or three credit hours online. These schools must certify to SEVP through the Form I-20, all right? Certification of eligibility for the non-immigrant uh, student status. Serving fast, the program is not entirely online, that the student is not taking an entirely online course load this semester, and that the student is taking the minimum number of online classes. Uh, required to make normal progress in their degree, degree program. The, the above exceptions do not apply to F1 students in English language training programs or M1 students per, per, uh, uh, pursuing vocational degrees who are not permitted to enroll on any online classes. So M1s, no online at all. Um, you cannot use the hybrid if you are taking any of your classes are the English as second language classes. Those are the ESL students 
Those you cannot do online. Those have to be in person. So in the, the scenario where the school is a hybrid school, and I think we'll see a lot of schools, regular schools having a hybrid model, this is the way to do it, schools, um, then you have to get the, uh, the I-20 approved for the student to take the maximum a number of onlines, meaning not all of them. Um, that is the best scenario for them. So schools uh, should update their information in the SEV, the SEVA system within 10 days of the change if they begin the fall semester with in-person classes but are later required to switch to only online classes or a non-immigrant student changes their course selection as a result ends up taking an entirely an online course load. Non-immigrant students within the United States are not permitted to take a full course of study through online classes. If students find themselves in this situation, they must leave the country or take an alternative steps to maintain their non-immigrant status, such as reduced course load or appropriate medical leave. All right, so that's the scenario there. F1 student, non-immigrant students pursue academic coursework and non-M1 non-immigrant students pursue vocational course, coursework while studying in the United States. So um, this is uh, this is the scenario right now. So um, if you want more information, uh, please uh, put a comment below or go to uh, onlinevisas.com and set up a strategy session. Um, universities, if you want to talk to us, we can uh, help you analyze this. I think the best scenario for universities is to become a hybrid model. Um, if it is a regular school doing normal in-person classes, they're only going to be limited to one class uh, online, and that's going to put a lot of students in a really tough situation. We don't know what's going to happen yet with schools. Uh, so this is uh, the one thing where they're looking at the worst-case scenario, but it's going to be tough on students. So um, let's move on to the second thing. All right, now in less than 30 days um, from today, uh, uh, the cash strap USCIS um, will start furloughing more than 13,400 employees. That's nearly 70% of its workforce unless Congress authorizes emergency medical funding to avoid a scenario that would cripple the nation's largest immigration system. All right, so um, be pretty tough. So um, USCIS employees have already started uh, receiving notices of their looming furlough, so that is not good, which would start on August 3rd. Um, if that happens, the agency would be left with a skeleton crew that would make it difficult to sustain our critical mission of administering our nation's lawful immigration system, says Jodis, Joseph Edlow, the deputy director for policy at USCIS and the de facto head of the agency, which he said to CBS News. Um, so really, uh, Congress is uh, needs to pass a $1.2 billion emergency funding and promise to repay these funds. USCIS would promise to repay these funds by imposing a 10% surcharge on applications. So that means filing fees will go up if Congress does that. Um, but a standoff has emerged between Congress and the Trump administration, leaving a cloud of uncertainty hanging over the USCIS workforce and millions of immigrants who file petitions in the agency any given year. Lots of uh, those who are practitioners in this world think that this is the nail in the coffin. Ladies and gentlemen, we've seen some really tough um, proclamations from the president uh, regarding green cards and then non-immigrant visas. Uh, later, uh, there is some meat on the bones left for those. You can file green card applications inside the United States. For all of those scenarios, there are some exceptions for green cards that can be filed outside the United States. So green cards are still being filed. H-1Bs, L-1s, TNs, I'm not sorry, H-1Bs, L-1s, H-2Bs, um, and uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's it. Those four um, have a proclamation that stops them from outside the country, but those can all be changed of statuses in the United States um, still right now. So a lot of companies still filing those. That's all good. But if USCIS furloughs 70% of its workforce, um, you're going to see a drastic slowdown at best um, and maybe some more uh, proclamations coming after that. We don't know. So uh, the president's doubling down on his anti-immigration sort of stances. Uh, a lot of those that watch this think that these are some of the, the types of things that were in the designs before, and COVID-19 is now being used as a reason to do these things. So um, COVID-19 had some uh, some nice special exemptions to people uh, to continue doing immigration. Now it's being used sort of as a weapon against immigration, um, and that's tough. And really on the students. Uh, 
Students are not taking jobs away from Americans, and uh, this could really uh, have unintended circumstances of really, really hurting our universities, if those are unintended circumstances. I mean, the universities have been um, have been in fights, um, so these are uh, with the administration as well. Education not at the forefront of this administration, if you watch what Secretary DeVos has been doing. Uh, so um, maybe this is a crippling move. Um, these are not... Um, an opinion of mine. I'm just, you know, raising those as questions. Um, I hope that's not the case. Uh, but that's uh, some pretty rough news. This is John Veely, CEO of Online Visas. We deliver dreams. Thanks. Take care.